Good morning, everybody. Uh, somebody asked me yesterday to make a video about why I left ISKCON, because I guess I told this person before uh, my actual motivation and, and reason for that after being with ISKCON for five years. And he found it very helpful. So uh, if anybody's watching this video um, or interested in watching this video if, because of the title, it's going to say why I left ISKCON. You may be thinking of leaving ISKCON or maybe you're just kind of curious to see what this guy has to say about or what kind of criticism he has to say about ISKCON. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and <clears throat> but it's not it's it's going to be d probably different than uh, people thinking it's going to be about criticism what I'm going to say because really not <laughs> I'm very feel very fortunate to have con connected with ISKCON and Prabhupada through ISKCON and in a sense I don't feel like I've really even left ISKCON because <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada is Iskan, and he came to me in a lucid dream and gave me explicit instructions of what to do with my life. And <laughs> so <laughs> I have to say that's still a connection. But on the, on the superficial level, I'll, I'll talk a little bit why I left Iskan. And, uh, and, and actually, Prabhupada made a house in a sense that where all devotees can actually live. What we need is 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 um, wisdom and experience and knowledge, understanding devotional service on its various levels. That's what it was about for me, is to make distinctions about where I fit personally, <laughs> where I fit, you know. And and actually, I want <clears throat> to. This statement kept coming to me. I, I heard this. Lord Chaitanya said this wonderful statement that uh, when he was in the mood of Radha, he says, I don't know the the regulative principles or I don't understand the regulative principles of the Creator. I only love Krishna for happiness. And I tell you, that is really the essence of, of what I needed to learn about my relationship with Prabhupada and with ISKCON. <laughs> you know, and because I, I just share the story of how I came to ISKCON in 1980, many years ago, um, I got one of Prabhupada's books, one of the compassionate devotees out there preaching and distributing books, and instantly when I read Prabhupada's words in the, in the Science of Self-Realization, I felt the connection, I felt this love awaken, see, in touch with a... Um, the ecstasy of love, being in touch with a bona fide guru, or a bona fide spiritual master, and then I then I went to the temple and I started chanting and and immediately I felt happy. <laughs> I felt the happiness of being with Krishna, because you know Krishna is in his mantra and in his name. I so happy that I started to cry. <laughs> while I was walking around the temple room doing my japa. And I didn't know anything. I just came, you know, I was just started. I was a bhakta. It was my first day, and I just started chanting and just walking and just felt I was happy with that, chanting that mantra. See? I didn't know anything about regulative principles and what you should do or you shouldn't do. <laughs> I was just happy to be with Krishna in his name. <laughs> and so I chanted... And cried, uh, you know, just the, just started coming up and like this and tears and shaking and whatever else. And the temple president comes right over and says, no crying in the temple room. This is offensive. <laughs> I was really kind of shocked, man. <laughs> if I had the wisdom and the experience and intelligence, I would have knew right then, like, what the actual problem was. The essence of the problem, okay? So, because uh, I was just, I just, you know, just wanted to be there with Krishna and the temple because it made me happy. You know, not because of any rule inspire me, you know, you follow this rule, you, know, you just feel really good. And that wasn't it for me, see? And, and so anyway, it was kind of like that kind of thing that was going on with me. I, I just... Um, 
uh, another experience I was reading Prabhupada's books yeah, well actually as soon as I started reading the books Nectar of Devotion, Chaitanya Charitamrita even, the one you're not supposed to read until you're, you know, very mature in devotional service after 20 years or something, after you go through Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavad As soon as I read Chaitanya Charitamrita, I says, I belong with these people. I This is my tribe. I just felt that. I started crying. All kinds of ecstatic feelings were arising. <laughs> just, I said, now I'm really happy. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, like that. And then, and then I'm, another experience I was uh, reading in the temple. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, I was, I, I, I would wake up really early in the morning. I didn't need an alarm clock. Even today, to this date, I don't need an alarm clock. I'm up at two, three o'clock in the morning, start chanting and read. I just love it, man. I just want to be with Krishna. Man. It's always been like that from the very first day. <laughs> Rules and regulations, I don't understand them. I don't know. I don't want to know them so much. I just want to, you know, overcome the faults of Kali Yuga by just drinking in Krishna. You know, it's like Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And this, I, I'm, I'm saying this because. Uh, uh, sharing this because there are certain types of devotees like that. They're not inspired so much or at all to follow Krishna because the rule says you do and you don't we're gonna go to hell if you don't follow principles and all that. They just like Krishna. They like they like devotees, they like the books, the devotees in the books especially. You know, they you know they just you know just they they're just with Krishna because it gives them happiness. So that type of devotee. If you're thinking of leaving ISKCON it, it, and you catch this video, you might be, you know, get some help understanding some perspective why you're thinking like that. It could be because of this reason. You're that type of devotee. And you're in a situation around devotees who are inspired to follow um, devotional service according to the rules and regulations because it inspires them. You know? <laughs> It took me 20 years, no, no, 15 years, about, actually more, more like 20 years to get really clear on what was the problem for me, you know, being with this guy, just not understanding, you know, like my place and my tribe and where I needed to be. So there was that going on. So another story. I was, you know, like, as I said, I would get up early in the morning, just naturally. I just had, I just start reading and drinking in Prabhupada's books. And I was so ecstatic, everything. And then I have the um, the temple commander, who was uh, Purnachandra at the time, I think. <laughs> he became a guru. And I remember I saw him years later, and he said, you remember that time I almost threw you out of the temple room for not going to the program? So they're trying to get me to go to the regulative program, you know? And I was so happy being with Krishna, I didn't want to leave, and I wouldn't leave, actually. And they said, you've got to go to the program. And I said, no, I'm just I'm happy here with Krishna, you know, doing this, reading this book, man. I just so, I don't, can't leave. Well, you got to do it this way, you know, this is what we do, and this, you're supposed to do it like this, and it's in the program, Prabhupada said this, and, you know, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> so I almost got thrown out of the temple. Because of being insubordinate, <laughs> you know, I don't know how I, actually, I actually left for a while and then I, I came back. But anyways, five years of this, I finally had the way I was able to last five years was I just went on Sankirtan, um, traveling Sankirtan alone, <laughs> and 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 I was a uh, you know selling paintings and I was one of the best sellers. I would sell you know people would just come up and buy I, just spontaneously. Yeah, I didn't didn't have to no effort. I just sat there and people would just come up and start buying the paintings. <laughs> My uh, guru said I was one of the best collectors in the whole world. <laughs> he wouldn't even mention how much I collected because he said otherwise people were going to want to, you know, maybe get, you know, try and get me over there. But anyway, I, I was more happy because I was outside. Okay. 
And when I did come to the temple after some years, back to the temple mainly and do service, and I had to live in a separate house because I just could not live close to the devotees. My behavior and qualities were different than their behavior and what inspired them and all of this. It just, just did rub the wrong way. So they gave me a separate house to live in because I was still a good collector. <laughs> Give me some facility. <laughs> But after that was even too close. I just felt like I was too, you know, trying, they're trying to, you know, like control me and do this. Is just the the regulative level of devotional service. There's a lot of control, manipulation, even. Uh, it's just the way it is. It's just you know, and then I I don't criticize. It just is what it is, and it wasn't for me. And it just took me many years to understand that. Even I when I when I actually left ISKCON, I, you know, and I was uh, in fear because people, they say, you go, uh, you leave this kind, you're going to go into Maya man and you're going to hell and all this stuff. So I had this fear in there. And, but when I left, I felt so good, <laughs> you know, just to be on the fringe, on the outside, you know, because this way I can, you know, do what I want to do. But I actually, I was so burnt out being in that situation because it just wasn't my mentality and temperament wasn't for that, that I ended up leaving for uh, Krishna for years. I just went in, I started making money and businesses and, and uh, you know, making big money, you know, as a, in real estate and I just, you know, accumulated apartment buildings and all of that. And, but then I got bur burnt out on that. <laughs> and then my gradual coming back to Krishna was I went to a health resort in uh, uh, California, Harbin Hot Springs, New Age place. Took massage courses. I had a lot of money. I had like you know, over a hundred thousand dollars, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyway, I took two months, and it turned it into six months. And I was felt a lot of healing, you know, a lot of massage courses and and releasing and just a lot of stuff and. And then I started to have some spiritual awakening again. And then inside said, you get Chaitanya Charitamrita. Go find a Ch Ch Chaitanya Charitamrita. I couldn't find one for a long, it took me a month. Yeah, nobody had it. <laughs> and they didn't have it there. They're in the new age and impersonalism stuff. But I just kept looking and looking, you know. And then one day I found it at Govinda's in Santa Cruz. And I read one pair, one, one, one verse. And instantly, my connection with Prabhupada came back. I knew I'm a servant of Prabhupada. I knew it. And immediately, I dropped everything. I bought a uh, motor home. Uh, you know, as I said, I had a lot of money. And I just filled it with Prabhupada's books and just went all over the country in bliss, just, just distributing these books, you know, and chanting. I was like in this bubble. I was hearing and chanting constantly. And I just loved it. I was with Krishna. I was. I had these Amala Bhakti Das, Chaitanya Lila, and all the Srimad Bhagavatams. I just listened and listened and drank and drank, and I was in this bubble of bliss. I just go out and distribute the books, man. I just was so happy. So anyway, I was going through uh, where my old temple was, sort of uh, in in Dallas. I was in Houston, so I go to Dallas, and I I just, I just wanted to share my heart with with my uh, the temple president now, who was a friend. Um, I forgot his name, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share. I'm back. I'm back now. I'm back with Prabhupada, distributing books like this, and and then he said, <laughs> so I go and see him. I was very blissful and happy, and and then he said, um, well, that's and he didn't look very happy. Kind of looked morose. Like to, to me, a lot of devotees often, some devotees are happy, you know, but there's a, there's a kind of a moroseness with with a fair amount of them, <laughs> you know, and he was looking kind of morose, like he had a lot of responsibility or something. <laughs> so I told him my story, I'm back, you know, I'm distributing books, I feel so happy and blissful, you know, and, and he didn't wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> Matter of fact, he says, don't, yeah, don't you, don't, you know, you should start developing your relationship with your guru. You know, and that was Tamal Krishna at the time. And personally, I never felt any, I only felt my connection with Prabhupada. That's just my personal thing. 
and it was just I just didn't feel anything it just was a different just, I just took initiate because they said you're supposed to uh, you know he's the zonal acharya you know you just do this and this is what we do you know <laughs> so I just did it followed the program you know so anyway don't you think you should you know like stay here now and and uh and uh, develop your relationship with your guru. And I started to think like that. I thought, well, maybe I should. And immediately I lost my bliss. Inside, it's the heart. It's just just shut off. And I was very unhappy at heart. See, Krishna's in the heart. And this time, I was a little smarter because I was a little more in touch because all this hearing and chanting. I realized, oh, my heart isn't happy, and God's there. It's not me. That's I'm not doing it. I'm just listening, and I'm ready to make this decision to stay and, and develop my relation. And my heart is saying, no way, man. This is not good. <laughs> Don't do it. So I got it. And I, and I, I paid my obeisances, and I left, and I put the key in the ignition and started the engine, and my bliss came back. <laughs> just came back. I just felt so good. <laughs> and I just continued like that for a long time, just traveling around doing that program. Then I went to India. And that's a whole nother story. I'll get into that. <laughs> we'll make that another another video. I don't want to make this too long. So, in essence, what I've learned is there are two types of devotees, mainly in essence. And then there's gradations in that. But basically, it's as it is taught in the scriptures, there's the regulative, um, those who are inspired by rules and regulations to follow Krishna consciousness. And they're glorious. Anybody who takes to worship of Krishna is glorious because only one out of millions usually does, really. It's a rare thing. I'm here in a city and there's maybe, I don't know, maybe not even a hundred devotees here in the whole Tucson. Yeah. Uh, and then there's various levels of that. I don't know, maybe there's more, but maybe not. I don't know. But there's not so many in comparison to how many people there are. So anyone who takes to any level devotional service is glorious. And and so anyway, there's the but they're inspired by the rules and regulations, and that's why the majority of devotees are like that, and that's why the the they're most of them are in these kind of groups. Then there's the devotees who are inspired and just get happy just chanting and hearing because they they just love the the it just Krishna awakens in their heart really easily like this it just it just is what it is you know and and they just feel happy being close to Krishna they they it's it's somehow effective like that and they just, it's not like the rule inspiring them to do it. It's just because they just get this kind of happy feeling being around Krishna. Being around devotees in the books who who, um, who are talking about Krishna. And then if they meet a living devotee, it's like when Prabhupada was around. I mean, a really living, high-level devotee. They like being around him. And, and this, I learned years later, is there were two types of Prabhupada uh, followers. Some didn't care so much about the rules and regulations. They just wanted to be near Prabhupada and serve him. That's all they, they just wanted to do that. See, there, and, and then there was the ones who were inspired by following all the rules and regulations and all of this. And there was a bit of a clash because the ones who were following rules said, Prabhupada, you know, they're not following. They just want to, you know, just you know, do their own thing and be with you and, and do this thing, but they're not following what you're teaching and all of this and the and the Vaidhi Bhakti program, they're not doing it. So Prabhupada had these two types of devotees. Just, you know, it's kind of how it is. And the, the main thing is just lack of understanding between both groups. There might be somebody that likes just this idea, they like to hear and chant and they like to do some service for the devotees and they did the rules and to do all this and to fit into the box, you know, and just, to, it's kind of, I tell you, man, I went to these programs, it's so, to me, robotic, I just can't do it. I just wouldn't want, I just, I just don't feel happy at all. See, I'm just with Krishna because it makes me happy, you know, happier than anything else. 
That's it's like uh, that's why I can relate to the statement of Radharani. I'm with Krishna because it makes me happy, just for happiness. Not I don't understand these rules. I don't want to understand. I just want to be close to Krishna. Okay, so there is there is that. So there's two sections of devotees. Don't have to say anyone's better or worse. It's just it's just how it is. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur taught it in his book Madhurya Kandambini. There, there, and and another book I forgot what it was, but it's the about this stuff. Two types of devotees, and some are attracted to follow in the footsteps of these uh, of the residents of Raj, and that's what they're. That's basically, in essence, what they're doing. They're only with Krishna because it makes them happy. Okay, that's it. So if you're like that kind of devotee, you're following in the footsteps of those persons. Because <laughs> they're only in it for Krishna for the happiness and not because of the rules. Okay. So I don't know, maybe you'll find this um, video helpful. It's not about criticizing ISKCON or anything like that. I left that a long time ago. And I'll, I'll just share a little bit about that. The thing with, with people in ISKCON, because there might be some people thinking about, oh, I want to watch this video, why Gorhari Das left ISKCON, because I don't, you know, the Ritviks are right, you know, and the gurus are wrong. You know, see, this is a kind of a dualistic view, you know, and, and, and that's why it's so it's controversial, and some people believe that side, and other people believe this side, and then they have their arguments and debates and all of this. But, you know, in essence, what is that? It's called Ras. You get a taste for arguing. Now, a person who is tasting Krishna never likes that because it's a higher taste. It is. A higher taste is to drink in the nectar of the name and the fame and the pastimes of Krishna, and that is an obstacle. I know, because I went through this and I went, you know, I got into the game a little bit, went, took a side, and this, you know. And, but ultimately, I, I left it because... You know, it's it, it, it's it's the Ross that are devotees are choosing because they that's what they got. You know, they take a side. I'm with the gurus. I'm with the Ritviks. And and the gurus are wrong, and the Ritviks are right, or the Ritviks are wrong, and the gurus are right. You know, it is just, and it's endless. It'll just go on like that forever. The only ones that are actually will ever know. Uh, it's just. You know, like what's going on there are the confidential disciples of somebody who really knows and will share confidentially what's going on to understand how wh how it all fits, how that fits and how the writ fits and how the guru thing fits. Because if, if you understand it, then it makes sense. And maybe we'll someday make a video on that. Let's see. Um... Okay, so that's it for this one. You know, why I love this con. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Hope you find it valuable. <laughs> okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Actually, I never left this con, really. I'm still there. Prabhupada is this con. And he came to me and ordered me, and I'm just following his order, man. Even right now, right now, this second, what I'm doing is his order, man. <laughs> So I am connected. <laughs> Externally, it may look different, but internally, I'm connected now. So awesome. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to um, Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. All glories to Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda and all their wonderful servants and all glories to Radha and Krishna. Thank you for coming again as Lord Chaitanya and, and uh, just, just forcing us to drink the nectar of your lotus feet. Haribo. <laughs>